Hi everyone, thanks for joining us for this webinar on fundraising for your 2020 GOTC work. As you know, Asian Americans Advancing Justice is working to ensure a full and accurate count of our communities in the 2020 census. As a national hub, we are working to develop curriculum and materials to support your GOTC work, including fact sheets, toolkits, webinars, social media graphics, in-language materials, and more. Today, we are excited to dive deeper into fundraising. As you may know, this webinar is the seventh installment of our monthly census webinar series, which we launched in August 2018. If you missed our previous webinars and want to tune in, you can access them with the links on this slide. Our next webinar is taking place in April and will focus on outreach to LGBTQ communities. We will send out an invitation with more details in the upcoming weeks. Now I will quickly introduce our speakers for today. First up will be Karen Narasaki, who is a national authority on voting rights, census media, immigrant, immigration rights, and race relations. A consultant to the Bauman Foundation, she was appointed to the U.S. Commission on Civil Rights in 2014 by President Barack Obama and is the former president slash executive director of Asian Americans Advancing Justice, AJC, vice chair of the Leadership Conference on Civil Rights, and served on the U.S. Census Decennial Advisory Committee. Jocelyn Bissonnette joins FCCP as the director of Funders Census Initiative. For nearly a decade, she served as the director of policy and advocacy for the National Association of Federally Impacted Schools where she represented public school districts that encompass American Indian reservations and military installations before Congress and the administration. And then we also have Christine Chen, who is the founding executive director of API Vote. During her tenure, she has strengthened and expanded API Vote's partners into 26 states. API Vote's research and polling of Asian American voters and their regional trainings and field programs have strengthened the local grassroots programs in reaching and mobilizing Asian American and Pacific Islander voters. We will have a Q&A at the end, and you can use a chat box or question box to send your questions or raise your hand to have your line unmuted so you can ask questions yourself. If you have questions during the presentation, please use the chat box or question box to send us your questions. This webinar is recorded, and we will send out the recording and presentation after the webinar. Now, without further ado, I will turn it over to Karen Narsaki. Hi, thanks. Hello, everybody. Uh, as was mentioned, I am a consultant to the Bauman Foundation. The Bauman Foundation is a national foundation and it is chairing and staffing a collaborative of national and regional funders and foundations who uh, have been supporting census work, both policy and now get out the count uh, for the last couple of years. And I'm going to talk about what national funders are looking at. So next slide. You can go to the next slide. So the national funders that I work with are really focused on the communities that are at our risk for being hard to count. Uh, that's because historically uh, they have been significantly undercounted and there are a number of reasons for that. Um, because of that, the strategy has been to one, focus on culturally resonant messages. We know one of the challenges for the Bureau is they will not be translating in more than a, uh, maybe a dozen or so languages. Uh, and so the communities will really need to be able to understand how best to talk about the census in ways that make sense to immigrants who come to the United States. Um, we're also focused on developing and conduct uh, conducting a get out the count media communications plan. On the national level, we know that there will be local communities and funders who will be organizing state and local plans, which is great, uh, but we want to make sure that there's an umbrella national plan that people can plug into if they can't connect to a state or local plan. Uh, we've created a network of expert national hub organizations who will be providing technical assistance and training materials, uh, Asian Americans Advancing Justice, and it's various affiliates are part of that hub. Uh, and we know that we'll need to create a rapid response network. Things go wrong, and this is the first census, as you know, that will be largely taken online. And so we understand that there will be challenges as they try to bring that to scale. Uh, we will be testing and disseminating te technologies to assist in outreach and organizing 
uh, an increased digital organizing capacity since it's online and since uh, 2010 we did not have as much social media as we have now uh, and so that will be an advantage but we need to understand how best to deploy that and then finally national funders have created a fund to help uh, those states and localities with high hard to count populations uh, but low fundraising capacity next slide Uh, so I mentioned that we had funded research and message development, as you are probably aware. <clears throat> Hopefully you've been on at least one of the webinars from Asian Americans Advancing Justice AAJC that has done some extensive messaging research. Uh, we have funded the other communities. We know that many of your organizations don't just serve Asian Americans, but serve other communities as well. So there's Arab American, uh, Blacks uh, and Black immigrants, uh, Latinos. Uh, American Indians, particularly on reservations. Uh, and then we have funded some special research, uh, one on children. As you know, uh, children under the age of five are significantly undercounted, and we're trying to understand what we need to tell parents. Uh, that messaging research is going into the field uh, this coming month and hopefully will be available sometime in May or June. Uh, and then we just uh, sponsored a webinar on San Joaquin Valley research uh, that was very groundbreaking in that it was really able to talk to households that had undocumented or mixed households or legal permanent residents to understand how the citizenship question might be affecting the way that they're looking at the census. Next slide. Uh, I mentioned the National Hubs providing materials, training, and technical assistance in addition to Asian Americans Advancing Justice, uh, AJC on the national level and its affiliates on the local level. There's also uh, funding for Community Action Partnership. They are the umbrella agency for the Head Start, uh, Community Health Clinics, Weatherization Programs, uh, the Fair Immigration Reform Movement, who you know is funding grassroots uh, immigrant activists. Faith in Public Life and Shepherding the Next Generation is a place for faith-based organizations to plug in. Uh, the National LGBTQ Task Force, you're going to have a webinar after this one, uh, focus on uh, the intersectionalities of our the Asian community and LGBTQ. I mentioned Partnership for America's Children, which is very focused on the children's undercount. Ready Nation, which is a resource on businesses. So if you're trying to reach out to businesses, they put together business-friendly language and some ideas of how businesses can get involved that uh, you might be interested in tapping into, particularly if you're trying to get them to uh, consider uh, providing funding or providing in-time uh, efforts on the census. State Voices and the Leadership Conference Education Fund are together created a table for state and local groups to plug into to be able to share best practices, uh, get briefings on the latest information, and to help with coordination. And then, of course, uh, the uh, other groups that cover the other ethnic and minority communities of African American, Latino, uh, Native American, Arab American. Next slide. Uh, we also supported other national resources. Resources Libraries are going to play a very important role. We know that Asian communities access them, um, particularly when there's, uh, they may not have access to computers, uh, and uh, libraries are a very good source for that kind of assistance. So we want to make sure that libraries are ready and understand what kind of assistance they might need to be able to provide, and we're trying to help them uh, get some additional equipment so that they could be able to uh, maximize their support of the community when it comes time to actually fill out the form. Uh, community Connect Lab, they're trying to help uh, communities understand how to help recruit uh, workers. Uh, the, this is the first time that there's an online uh, survey, but also they are, the Census Bureau is restricting its recruiting and applications for the many thousands of census jobs to online. Uh, and so they're trying to help people because trying to 
report to the forum online is not the easiest thing. Uh, ethnic Media Services, which has been doing briefings for ethnic media. Georgetown Center on Poverty uh, and Equity, that's uh, providing briefing sheets on things like how will homeless be counted, how will rural areas be counted. And then uh, we have supported the organizations that support your elected and appointed officials, NASA, National Association of Counties, National Conference of State Legislatures, National League of Cities. National League of Cities in particular has a fabulous municipal action guide. So if you're working with cities or counties who are trying to figure out what they can be standing up, I really recommend uh, that guide. Next slide. Uh, I had mentioned that we are trying to help increase uh, the technology and digital organizing capacity. So there's a number of ways. One is there will be trainings online as well as some webinars uh, that are related to digital organizing uh, academy uh, around particularly the census that's uh, been put together by 270 strategies and two big things. It will be available on a website that the Leadership Conference Education Fund has been putting together for the census 2020 campaign uh, and is being launched uh, at the end of this month, uh, along with many other toolkits and materials, uh, recognizing that we're uh, almost at April 1, which is a year away from the official census day. Uh, we also will be funding some pilots. Uh, some of your groups may be doing voter engagement work. We are trying to look at how uh, groups doing voter engagement work, how they can also marry that with the census work. And particularly, there are some online tools that were being used for voter reg and get out the vote that we're trying to see uh, how they might need to be tweaked in order to support get out the count activities. Next slide. I mentioned this uh, special matching fund, the equity fund that uh, national funders have been uh, Funding, uh, we launched it last November. There are gonna be four rounds of funding. Uh, the states on the screen are the ones that we are targeting. It's basically, as you can tell, the South, Southwest, and Indian countries. Next slide. Uh, we are really looking at uh, proposals from groups who are collaborating and trying to put together a comprehensive outreach campaign for their state or locality. Uh, we're looking at how feasible the work plan is, particularly uh, in its outreach to the hard to count communities. Uh, we're looking for the track record. Do you really have a track record of working with these communities? Uh, what kind of partnerships do you have? Um, your commitment to using resources that are available through the national networks. We want to limit the reinventing the wheel. There's very limited resources, so to the extent that people can be uh, using shared resources uh, that will make everybody more effective, although we understand that you might need to tweak some things for your local realities. And then, of course, there is a matching uh, uh, soft requirement. It's a one-to-one -one match um, with local funders or wherever you might be able to find uh, additional funding. Next slide. Uh, we funded a series of grants already in the first round, uh, Alabama, Alaska, Arkansas, Florida, Georgia. Next slide. We seem to be uh, Mississippi, New Mexico, North Carolina, Tennessee, Texas, and Virginia. A number of these were collaborative proposals, so even if there's just one name, they usually were doing it in partnership. Uh, if you're in that state, uh, you're not connected to that uh, partnership, you might reach out to them, find out what's going on. Uh, in many, in some of these states, there are some local funders and also efforts to try to get the state or cities to provide funding. Uh, so that's one way for you to get plugged in. Next slide. Uh, we're on the second round. We issued a request for proposal uh, last month. Uh, they are due in a couple of weeks, so hopefully if you're thinking about it, you're already working on one. Uh, the range uh, of funding has been between 100,000 to 200,000. 
Uh, and uh, if you need information, you can reach out to Amy Dominguez Arms, and her information is available on the slide. Next slide. So thank you, and I will turn the rest of it over to Jocelyn. Thanks, Karen. I'm really happy to be participating in today's discussion. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, the work that we're doing, um, which is really complementary to the work that Karen and the National Funders are doing. Um, next slide. Um, just a quick note about, um, and then one more, sorry. <laughs> Um, uh, just a bit about us. Um, so we're, um, I'm Jocelyn Bissonette with the Funders Committee for Civic Participation. Um, we're a network of about 100 national, regional, state, and community-based foundations. Um, and specifically, my work at FCCP is directing the Funders Census Initiative. Um, and we are committed to um, uh, mobilizing funders around a fair and accurate, uh, a fair and accurate census. Um, and so I want to talk a little bit about some of the resources that we've been working on um, that are available both to funders as well as stakeholders. Next slide. Um, but to Karen's point, I think it's just important to reemphasize we know that the census count is not equal opportunity and there are populations that are historically hard to count. Um, and that the funders that Karen and I are working with are really focused and focused and targeting our efforts um, on those historically hard to count um, communities, as opposed to the Census Bureau, which we know will have a really massive um, education and awareness um, and outreach campaign. So that's really what distinguishes um, sort of the federal government's efforts from um, our targeted efforts, which we know is reflective of your organizations as well. Next slide. So a bit more about the Funder Census Initiative. Again, we're a network within the Funders Committee for Civic Participation, and we're really a place where funders can connect to stay informed on policy updates, um, to learn from one another, to connect with resources. <laughs> and FCI has been really important. It was active in both the 2010 cycle and the 2020 cycle. Um, but because the census happens once every 10 years, a lot of foundations don't have established program areas specifically for the census. And so part of what we're also trying to do is create that learning community and provide technical assistance um, so that funders don't feel like they have to absolutely start from, from scratch, that there's a way for them to, to plug in and benefit from the learning of, of funders in other states and other communities. Um, and we're also, um, a couple of the things that, uh, that we're also trying to do are um, sort of work through some of the myths and objections that we sometimes hear from funders about hesitancy around their engagement um, of the census. So um, things like why does philanthropy need to be involved when, um, when the census is a government activity? We know that philanthropy played a really important role in the 2010 census in helping to mobilize organizations and to funnel critical resources um, to really be to be able to support organizations like yours that are trusted in communities and have the reach of traditionally hard to count communities. And something else we sometimes hear from funders is that um, again, because census is in, designated within their current funding missions, we really try and make the case that the census has implications across every single issue area. And so if you spend a little bit of time thinking about it, thinking about the resources rely on census data and how broadly it impacts our society and our ability to understand and respond to the country that we live in, that there is that singular point of connection between whatever that foundation's mission or focus is and wanting to um, support efforts around a fair and accurate um, 2020 count. Um, I just another point just about the, our funding community is that we um, have funders that are at varying levels of engagement. So we have really tight knit collaboratives of funders and states that worked on the 2010 census that were able to rely on really extensive networks and evaluations that came out of that the 2010 census as well as 
um, those that operate within states that have really robust civic infrastructure. Um, all the way to um, communities of funders that are just thinking about organizing for the first time that operate in states where there are fewer, um, fewer civic engagement infrastructure resources to begin with. Um, and are really using the census as an opportunity to organize for the first time, to think about what a statewide funder collaborative looks like for the first time. Um, and it's, what's most exciting about this work is not just the potential that this has to support organizations within states around the census, um, but also the opportunity for these investments and this engagement and this mobilizing and organizing to build uh, permanent civic infrastructure. So we really see the work that we're facilitating um, as both immediately responding to the needs that exist around census mobilization, but also as an opportunity to help organizations build capacity and to help funders think about how they approach a statewide organizing strategy to support, to support that civic infrastructure. Next slide. So again, I wanted to highlight some resources that FCI has available to both funders and stakeholders. Some of these Karen mentioned already, so I, I'll go through them quickly. Um, one is that we, um, with um, the Democracy Funders <coughs> Census subgroup, FCI co-hosts quarterly meetings for funders and stakeholders. And this is an opportunity for national, state, and community-based funders and stakeholders to be in community with one another. I think one of the things that's been really exciting about this work is how strong, uh, strong alignment there is between funders and stakeholders and just the strength of the partnerships between the national funder and stakeholder hubs. And so these meetings give us an opportunity to come together to hear the latest updates, to strategize and to continue to make sure that our work's in alignment. Another key resource that FCI um, is putting out on a regular basis is a key 2020 census milestones document, and that's a do document that's been circulated on uh, most of the listservs. In addition, we've hosted um, and have available the slides and recordings on our websites of the 2020 census messaging testing results that Karen mentioned. Next slide. I also wanted to highlight a new webinar series that we just kicked off last month that we're co-hosting with the Census Counts campaign, focused specifically on census operations. You can see the dates and topics listed there, and we'll be in touch probably this week with the RSVP uh, registration links for both the April and the May um, the April and the May webinars. And we're really excited to be able to. Um, focus on these operational topics and make them available to both funders and stakeholders and have been really pleased with, the, we're really pleased with the level of engagement on the March webinar. And again, you can look through, look for those registration links through, um, um, you know, through your census uh, listservs. Um, and one of the other resources that I wanted to highlight, um, which was a report, was a report that was um, funded by the Democracy Funders Census subgroup that looked at, that did a six state uh, landscape scan that included interviews by state-based funders, philanthropy serving organizations and stakeholders. And this report was really useful. It was a point of reflection for the funders. Um, that are really advanced in their work to be able to share more broadly some of the, the best practices and tension points that they've experienced working uh, among funders, between funders and stakeholders, and between funders and government within their states. And this has served as a useful template document for funders in, in states that maybe aren't as far along in their, in their organizing or census planning work. Um, and so some of the themes and this report is available online. So um, if you're interested in reading more thoroughly what the themes and lessons were, that, that report is available. Um, but start now, we know that this work is really urgent and we know that in some cases, organizations on the ground are refining their messaging, they're refining their plans, um, but they're still waiting on funding to be able to support that work. They've taken on this work because it's important both to their organizations as well as they recognize the broader implications that a fair and accurate census has 
Um, and so we want to make sure that funders also feel that urgency and are making those uh, investments as quickly and as strategically as they can. The report also identified, and again, probably none of these themes are a surprise to you, the importance of co-creation, um, effectively leveraging existing infrastructure, but also thinking creatively about the organizations that have real reach and historically undercounted communities. And then a couple of more, um, a couple of more um, themes here, um, coordination gaps, uh, partnerships, <clears throat> messaging and message testing, um, and then one that I think is really powerful um, at, at the end here, addressing fears, but also creating space for communities to leverage census as a tool for their own liberation. We know that the um, the fear and mistrust is a major barrier, um, but also um, an opportunity for communities to be empowered and engage in census work that is reflective and responsive to the needs within their own communities. One more. One more. One more. Good. Um, and so we really approach funder engagement around these three buckets, participate, convene, and invest. And so I wanted to just give you a little bit of an insight about how um, we are encouraging funders to think about their, their work. Um, we think that there is a role for funders to participate, um, whether it's um, educating policymakers, helping to create or serve on complete count committees, or participating in the regulatory process. We had an unprecedented response to the addition of the citizenship question. More than 300 funders signed a letter to the Department of Commerce calling for its removal last summer. Convene, we know that funders have a really powerful convening power, and so we think that there is a role for funders to play to be able to bring government, business, philanthropy, and community groups to get together to cover the costs of convenings and trainings. Um, that we think that's a, a role that funders can play. Um, and ultimately, the goal is for funders to invest, um, invest their dollars, whether it's an add-on grant to current grantees, contributing to a pooled fund, or setting aside some funds um, in the event that rapid response or emergency um, emergency um, um, funds are required to be able to respond to something in real time. And so again, these are just a couple of the specific examples that we are providing funders to be able to support their work to ultimately support um, or to support and partner with organizations, um, organizations like yours. I would say one of the ones that isn't listed here is relationships with the Census Bureau. So we've got, um, we as in addition to, to the national organizations have strong relationships with the Census Bureau and that has provided the opportunity to be able to identify what the gaps are in terms of what the Census Bureau doesn't anticipate it will be able to do. Um, so we can work with both funders and stakeholders to make sure that we're um, working to be able to try and address those gaps as best as possible. Um, and then my last slide, how can we support each other? So we just encourage you to connect with the national hubs like AAJC has a fabulous suite of resources and reach and is just a really important part of the census work. And we appreciate the partnership um, and the opportunity to be able to be in meetings and strategy meetings and convenings um, with the national groups. Um, ask funders who are currently supporting your work for an add-on grant to support your census efforts. This is something that we are really encouraging of our own funders. We certainly don't want organizations to be able to have to take on this work unfunded or to have to reallocate um, funds that they're already receiving. Um, but, so we really are encouraging our funders to think about additional grants to the organizations that they're already supporting. Um, if you come across funders that are interested in census but need a way to plug in or need additional support or resources, you can feel free to send them our way and we'd be happy to, um, to onboard them and get them connected either with census resources or to funders within their states and communities. 
help us distribute RFPs, like the one Karen mentioned, for example, um, and then again, continue to inform our work. Our connections and the feedback that we receive from field groups is incredibly valuable for us being able to identify the needs and be able to support funders in their census work. And just here's my contact information. Feel free to reach out to me or to access any of the um, resources that I mentioned on the FCI website. Thanks. Thanks, Jocelyn. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Christine Chen, Executive Director for Asian and Pacific Islander American Vote. Uh, we're a national organization who partners with local Asian American, Native Hawaiian, and Pacific Islander organizations to increase electoral and civic participation. So as we head into 2020, uh, we want to go ahead and um, you know realize that we have a full plate um, because it is this is one of the few census years where we actually also overlap with presidential elections. So I know many of you on the call um, have traditionally have worked with API Vote or a number of other groups on uh, voter registration and get out the vote activities and traditionally. Um, for an integrated voter engagement program, um, you focus on those who are eligible for citizenship or registered voters, who are citizens, and who are of voting age. But now, as we head into Get Out the Count, we actually have to expand that universe. We are now looking at engaging everyone by household. So um, not only are we engaging those that we traditionally have, but now we're looking at non-citizens and legal permanent residents and those um, of various status. And also, as it was uh, relayed earlier, uh, a focus on children as well, who are typically undercounted. Um, so that means we actually need to go ahead and expand our coalitions. Now, many of the organizations here on this call have done have built coalitions around public policy work or various civic engagement that you've done in the past but now as i said we are now trying to expand your coalition rethink about uh, specific ethnic communities you've worked with um, for instance like in ohio back in 2010 there was there wasn't even a bhutanese community in ohio mm -hmm. but now they're like one of the fastest growing populations there right um, you also have to recognize that many of your staff or volunteers that are in their 20s um, they were probably 10 or 11 years old at, back in 2010 um, or you're working with an immigrant population that had not even immigrated um, back in 2010. Um, so once again this is just like a a short checklist in terms of having you think through of the different types of organizations that may exist in our community and also to really think about organizations that do not have staff because a lot of our um, community is organized informally and it's really by the use of volunteers and and um, so they may not even have a formal 501c3 status but that is like our job in terms of identifying who are those trusted messengers in those communities and get them this year to actually understand the importance and their role in terms of helping us get out the count. As we move on to the um, budget considerations, as we we're talking about, like, well, how does this all work? Um, I know a number of you also um, get some funding from um, from the Culture Foundation, and so there is a number, a percentage of your um, budget that you're supposed to be setting aside for the census. At the same time, we're hoping that you will start looking into developing your plans and applying for local funding because um, the what has been um, different from 2010 to 2020 is that it really is focusing on local collaboration. And one of the things that we actually learned from 2010 is that most of the expenses that we um, focused on was really about printing of materials um, in terms of giveaways, uh, creating additional translations that may not necessarily are available on the national level. Um, paid advertising because in 2010, um, the, there were like 13 Asian languages that were uh, where paid advertising was being invested in. It looks like heading into 2020, it will only be five. Um, in addition, we know that our community has become even more diverse. So there are in terms of gaps in that. Um, 
2010, there are also uh, official questionnaire assistance centers. We, as of right now, do not know what that may actually, whether or not they exist or in what format they will. But in consideration, we should also start thinking about going to where our community is, creating our own pop-up um, QACs, um, so that way we could provide the technical assistance on the ground to the communities that need it, especially those who are limited English proficient. Um, and then also, you know, like I said, there is more focus on the regional level. So there may not necessarily be as many um, giveaways um, provided on the national level for you. So those are like type of things that you should really consider when putting together your budget um, and figuring out how you want to utilize the uh, grants that you actually are able to receive. The other thing is to also think as a community, like what is it that you guys could use collectively um, versus just thinking of it's just like uh, having sub grants to all these multiple organizations. Um, because the reality is that there's just never enough funding out there. And we really, this is really an investment that the entire community needs to put their time and energy in. Um, because this will impact us for the next 10 years and the type of resources we actually get. So moving forward, um, ACAVO is working with um, the information that is being provided by um, Asian American Advancing Justice, AJC, and the materials that they provide. And we are actually going out to the field to all of you. We're here, to, our role is to actually provide um, technical assistance and actually support for those of you on the field. So um, currently we are scheduling from May to October. Um, oh, sorry, actually, uh, apologies. That should be 2019, not 2020. May to October 2019 of this year, we are organizing a number of regional uh, trainings through our Norman Y. Mineta Leadership Institute. Um, in the morning, we'll actually be training a smaller group to prepare them for the presidential primaries. But then the afternoon is actually dedicated to a larger um, audience where we're hoping to help you build out your broader coalition to um, work on census. Um, our trainings will actually comprise of components of explaining census 101, also explaining what type of state specific infrastructure and resources are available for the AANHPI community to tap into. Um, second part will be focusing on messaging training and best practices. Uh, we all know that um, even from our voter engagement programs that it's about practice, practice, practice. The more volunteers that we have practicing about talking about census and explaining it to them and providing a comfort level and, uh, and understanding the importance of the census uh, will make all of us more efficient um, in terms of getting out the count. And then lastly, the last phase of the training is really creating the get out the count plan for that particular region, getting the commitments of these organizations and uh, messengers, trusted messengers, to actually commit to activities from January through like June of 2020. So with that, um, I want to go ahead and the next slide focus um, and let you know that currently these are the states where we've had received um, requests for actually implementing our regional trainings. We are looking at the particular dates, um, trying to also align it with um, our resources that we currently have. And we hope by next week to have a calendar of events of where we will be across the country. Um, so we look forward to working with each of you in terms of um, creating your plans and um, getting everyone involved in your particular communities. So thank you with that. Um, if you have any questions, our contact information is there, as well as Eric Salcedo, who's our National Field Director. Great, thank you for that. Um, we can now open up the floor to questions. Um, you can either use your chat box or question box to send your questions or raise your hand uh, to have your line unmuted so you can ask the question yourself. So, <clears throat> sorry. Our first question is from Lillian who asks, where can I access links to the previous monthly webinars? And for that, we can definitely send those in a follow-up email and we'll also be launching our census specific website in April and all of the resources will be available on there. And the next question is from Sanjita for Karen. And 
Sanjita asks, any communities are eligible to apply for the fund or just the states that Karen previously mentioned? And Karen, do you have a yeah, response? Sorry, to I had to unmute myself. <laughs> so uh, currently for the second RFP that's currently pending, only groups from the states that are on the list uh, are welcome to send us a, a concept paper. Uh, for the third round, we will be looking at, uh, depending on whether we've been able to raise additional funds for the fund, we will be considering whether uh, we will open up to a few more states uh, and we will let people know then. Thank you. And question from Jeannie for Christine is, how come Virginia is not on your list of states with training? Um, that is, is of today. So we are still open to receiving applications, but that these are the states that have applied so far. Great. And another question for Karen from Melissa is, do you have a list of local funders in each state? Uh, unfortunately, we don't have a list of local funders, and it's something that is changing, but I will, I'm going to punt that to Jocelyn because that's really in her area. Yeah, we don't have a, we don't have a, a list of um, funders, like and funders in all states. We are working internally to figure out what's the best and most appropriate way to be able to share in a broad way um, the level of engagement of funder collaboratives in states. That's something that um, we understand based on feedback would be useful to groups, but we're still trying to work through sort of logistically um, what's the comfort level with the extent of the information that we share broadly. So it's a good question and it's something that we're um, kind of working through internally. Great. Yeah. Anything else I would to add? On? If, yeah, I would suggest if you have local funders, you should check in with them to see whether they are engaged uh, with other funders. Some of the local funders have told me that their grantees aren't even asking them for funding, so they have not been paying attention because they don't think that there's a demand. So it's good to alert your local funders anyway. And then I would say in uh, most of the states in which probably you're in, where there are significant Asian populations, there are funders who are active. There's at least a handful of funders who are active in about, Dawson, would you say what, 30 states? Yeah, I would say at least it's um, um, it's changing really rapidly. Um, and there's funders yeah. that are in states that are organizing. So there should be um, either an aligned funding strategy or a pooled fund. Um, I think we'll see a lot more states come on board in the next couple of months. Okay. Next, Bridget asks, what is the general timeline for census funding? Is the census subgroup ahead of the curve by releasing funds now? Uh, well, we feel like we're behind the curve, but we are definitely ahead of the curve compared to 2010. And 2010 funding uh, did not go out to the field uh, until uh, late uh, in the 2009, so almost before the year of the census. Uh, so funders have definitely learned from that and started early. Uh, local funders, it depends on what state you're in, but local funders are beginning to uh, send out their requests for proposals uh, now, or I would say over the next uh, three or four months. Uh, in many states, you'll be seeing RFPs. Uh, all of the funders are really trying to get funding out if they have it early so that uh, your groups can plan, you know, so you guys can know how much resources you have and don't have and can plan accordingly. Thank you. And another person asked if we can get copies of the presentations and the contact information. Yeah, so we'll be sending out a PDF version of this PowerPoint after um, the webinar. So it'll have um, all the information of all the um, presenters today. Great. And another question for Christine is about Maryland not being included. Do you have a website explaining the eligibility for applying for these trainings? Right. So when um, we sent when 
AJC sends out the uh, webinar PDF, my contact information will be on there. So if you send me an email, I could go ahead and send you information on how Virginia and Maryland could sign up for a training. Great. Um, Jeannie, we're going to unmute you if you would, if you have another question. No, my question was just about Virginia uh, funding and training. And I think Christine had replied, so I will contact Christine. I do not know if it has to go through state voices, uh, Virginia new majority at all, or can we just do it uh, directly with you? Because I'm in the Virginia State Complete Cow Committee, and we're going to kick off the whole process this April 1st in many different regions in uh, Northern Virginia and in Richmond and in other uh, you know, regions. So it would be nice that we have the training schedule to announce. We This year we also work with the students. So I am working with the Mauser and Universa and we also have um, James Madison, the Dean of James Madison, excited about it. So we're thinking that we also need to uh, bring in the students to get them ready and prepare for 2020 uh, elections as well. Yeah, so we could um, talk offline, Jeannie. Um, we definitely want to uh, engage the complete count committees in each of the areas wherever we go for our trainings. Um, and then also for those who are looking at working with college students, we've already started and implemented a um, curriculum on census uh, for college students that we've already started implementing using at the East Coast Asian American Students Union Conference. Okay, so would you con con um, include me in that too? And I will reach out to you so we can talk offline. Huh? Okay, sounds good. Thanks, Jeannie. Great, thanks. The next question is, was the funding mentioned here only for Asian communities and what about networks that serve hard to count communities of all types, such as Latino and Black? Uh, so the state equity fund is for all communities. It's not just meant for the Asian American community, uh, although I know uh, many Asian American community groups have been part of the collaborators uh, that have already received funding or have been applying. Uh, but definitely, uh, you will have a stronger application uh, for that fund if you're working collaboratively, not just within the Asian community, but across with other organizations and other communities. Great. Um, if anyone else has any questions, you can put them in the chat box or the question box or unmute yourself. All right, um, so thank you to all our speakers and everyone online for joining us today. As mentioned earlier, this webinar is recorded and we will send it out um, either sometime this week or next week. Um, if you have any further questions, um, you can email us. Um, at census at advancingjustice-ajc.org. Um, we look forward to um, you all joining us in our next webinar on April 24th, which will be on engaging the AA and HPI LGBTQ community on the census. Thank you. Thank you.